back in uh, video 57, I was using this uh, signal generator, this frequency generator, and um, I was having some difficulties with the uh, the serial interface. I mean, the the device itself works absolutely fine, and um, generates good square waves, and you can change the frequency in the duty cycle, and and that's all great. Um, but there's a, a serial interface, and I really wanted to be able to control the thing using the um, using the serial port, as the online documentation suggests that you probably can. So I still haven't got this to work at the moment, but I just wanted to show you some of the things that I'd um, that I'd done to try and figure out why the serial wasn't working. So first of all, one of the things that struck me was uh, because this um, USB interface that I'm using, the CH340 based uh, interface. This offers both 5 volt and 3.3 volt working based on the jumper setting here. So I made sure to try it with both the 3 volt and the 5 volt selection. And, and here on the edge pins you can actually provide power to the unit using 5 volts or 3 volts. So that was one thing that I tried. But also I eliminated this completely and I was using an Arduino as the interface to um, to control this this device or to interface with the uh, the serial interface so you can do that by putting a script into the Arduino that reads things from one serial port and writes to another serial port so I tried that but it was really exactly the same and I was getting that same um, failed message whenever I sent any any data into the uh, the signal generator. So that's that's one thing that I tried. Um, I also had this connected to the oscilloscope and I was monitoring the serial pins and making sure there was a sensible voltage on there. Um, so that there was, you know, to make sure there was nothing electrically wrong with the, the way that I was driving the serial interface, and that looked absolutely fine. But that led me to an interesting um, sort of sidetrack. I wondered whether this board was happy with the the, the signal levels, and I realised that the um, the regulator on board the device there was a 3.3 volt regulator here which I've which I've now removed and I wondered whether the the chips were happy running at 3 volts um, looking at the data sheet for both the LCD chip and the microcontroller I realized that both could run up to 5.5 volts so this circuitry should all work quite happily with 5.5 um, volts although I think maybe the um, the backlight is extremely bright running it at 5 volts but uh, other than that so so what you can see here I've put a diode in so I've got a, di a diode that is uh, bypassing where the regulator used to be and um, uh, I'll, I'll put a schematic here I think so that you can you can see what it is that I've done so I, so I desoldered the regulator and put a diode in here. So this should be, the power rail here should be about 0.6 volts lower than the input voltage, which is currently 5 volts. So maybe it's about 4.4 volts, 4.5 4 volts, something like that. But that should, you know, be quite perfect for these, for these couple of chips. Unfortunately, that also didn't really have any effect. Um, and I once again tried using three volts as the input with with the diode there, um, but I was I was worried about the idea of three volts because with the with the with the, the existing th three point three volt regulator, even though it was a low dropout type regulator, I was imagining that the voltage might be a little bit low here. Um, because with the voltage drop, I was worried about the signal levels being being correct for the serial interface. So the with the uh, the 
digital logic, there have to be certain voltages for the one and zero to work. So I think with the 3.3 volt circuitry, a high needs to be at least two volts, and I think a low is can be no more than 0.4 volts. Anyway, as, as I said, that all turned out to be a bit of a sidetrack. I also captured this trace in the uh, logic analyzer. So this is uh, captured in a program called SIGROCK. And um, so I've set it up for serial. So we've got, this is the receive side into the module. This is the what's being transmitted out of the module. And I set it for 9600 bits per second, which is what it says in the documentation. Now, if we look at what has been captured, so here we've got the line feed that I sent. So this is um, the, the the only thing that makes it do something is when you send a, a character return or a line feed. So this is the line feed going out into the module here, 0A, and that looks correct. We've got a good start bit, good stop bit. And if we scroll over to the response, So this is a response here. We've got F A I L fail and then a line feed. So this is the response coming back from the module. Once again, you know, looks absolutely fine. Got start bits and stop bits. So on the surface, it looks to be working absolutely normally on the uh, serial interface. So um, one more thing, I uh, I told you before that the chip here, the microcontroller is the STM, STM8003F, uh, which is a sort of en entry level, you know, lo low function STM ARM based chip. And um, as luck would have it, I have the same chip uh, on this little evaluation board. So this is, the, these are quite nice little evaluation boards. So you get the STM-F8 chip with a reset button and then a LED. Um, you get a, a programming, uh, sorry, the programming interface is here and another serial port here. These, these are extremely cheap. These are only a pound each. And the, um, if I've got one here, the, the programmer for these uh, you can also get extremely cheaply and you can you can program your STM F8 chip either from uh, a Windows PC or from from a Mac or from a Linux machine and there are there are tools for uh, all, all of these different operating systems so that's quite neat I mean it's it's nowhere near as easy to use as the Arduino environment but um, but due to the low cost of these, the, the you can do some really interesting things with them for a, for a really small spend. Um, so you can program this using the ST Visual Develop uh, environment, which is available for Windows. And I'll show you what I've done there to to program this chip. So in the ST Visual Develop environment here, you'll see that I've I've loaded up one of the standard examples, so you get a, a library of samples. Now I've used this UART uh, project that they've got, and I've modified it slightly. So this is the existing sort of boot up message, um, which sends some text out to the serial port, which we'll probably see in a minute. And uh, so I changed the main loop of this program, and what it does now is it, it reads a character from the serial interface, and if the character that you've typed is A, so either a lowercase or a uppercase A, it will it will echo out this special message, received your message out to the terminal. So this is just a way that I, I put in to verify that I can correctly send characters into the serial interface on the uh, STM8 processor uh, and that I can get a 
intelligible message back again through the serial interface. So this is just proving to myself that using this setup that I've got with the um, CH340 based programmer, um, sorry, CH340 based USB interface, that I can actually send and receive serial. So let's fire that up and see how that looks. I'm going to use this program Terra term. So my STM8 device has come up as COM3. There's the screen there. Now if I press the reset button on this device, there you go. So we get the the welcome text from the uh, UART project. Now mostly if I type things I won't get any response because I haven't programmed it to to do anything along those lines. But if I type the letter A, you see it sends back the received your message, which is what I, I programmed in here as the, as the response. So in summary, that's a little bit of a disappointment, really. I mean, this works fine as a, a signal generator, but I really wanted to be able to control it externally. I wanted to be able to connect it to a, a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino and um, make it into something more interesting, you know, and, and build my own project around it. Um, so obviously, if anyone has any comments or suggestions to other things that I can try, um, I'd be extremely happy to to see your comments and to um, you know, experiment with this a little bit more. So thanks for watching. Keep the comments coming and uh, obviously subscribe if you'd like to see these kind of videos.